the Thoughty OT podcast. You know, I mentioned at the start that DID is probably one of the most stigmatized disorders out there uh, and conditions out there. Um, so I think it would be really useful to talk about the controversies um, because I, I, I did I did some research into into it and um, what I, what I really found to be quite illuminating for me was that um, there's a specific way that diagnosticians within like the psych- psychology field um, sort of create diagnoses um, and and the way that they do that and the way that they um, can create these criteria um, they have they have to be solid enough and picked up enough um, in enough people to be considered to be um, diagnosable like so with major major depressive disorder or, or clinical depression um you know uh they, they should be able to pick up a certain percentage of people as faking it or pick up a certain percentage of people who actually have the condition um and if if they can't then it, it can't really be a thing that they regularly diagnose and it was really really interesting looking at those sort of percentages because those um diagnosticians those psychologists who uh diagnosed uh DID in individuals actually showed that um they were more successful in diagnosing correctly with DID than with major depressive disorder which is just absolutely insane uh because it just pr- pretty much just spits in the face of people saying that it's not real um because now just thinking about it i mean a lot of the psychological or if not all of the psychological based disorders are or conditions they are um subjective they they there is always a wall between one person and the diagnostician there's always a person who can ec- experience things and and explain it in a different way or choose to omit certain things or choose to over exaggerate certain things and so just knowing that along with the fact that that sort of diagnostic rate is just a lot more successful for DID i feel like that that was a real sort of solidifier in me sort of um you know when i when i was sort of researching around it and such um so so probably the best question is is DID real and I know I, I obviously know what the answer is, but um <laughs> Well, um as far as I understand from research I, I won't won't use my my particular example there just because uh, sure. you can listen back to what has been said today and Mm -hmm. you can uh, take your own decision whether that sounded real or not Uh, but as for the things that I read and as for the things that are out there in the public domain as as, Mm -hmm. uh, for the research and uh, all the works that um, have been um, done by uh, the scientific community uh, it it's more than real. <laughs> like there is so much. Uh, I I think because of how stigmatized it is, and because of how many uh, um, people are actually putting it um, in doubt, mm-hmm. um, because there there certainly are such in the scientific community too. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it already proves that it exists. That no one has been able to um, disprove it just yet because there have been lots of attempts. But yeah, uh, because of that, also there's uh, additional scrutiny and there is even more uh, research done just to make sure that Mm -hmm. uh, all those um, claims of it not being real are uh, met and, and, you know, Prevent to be they, you know, like, because as, as you said, sort of 
you having the the physical differences, the the hormonal differences uh, around like um, your weight, um, as well as the things that you gravitate towards in life uh, being so different. I think, um, you know, there, the, the, I think if I'm right, there are, there are people who have particular things that could just particular aspects of their alters personalities or their likes or their skills that just couldn't be recl like replicable in, in, any circumstance like they're, they're they're always like this and they always have these these skills and like they have like iq differences and they have like different postures and have different like speaking patterns and such it's just it's it's i know uh, you know obviously that 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 i feel like is enough for for, for me and obviously talking to you and understanding it it's you know it's it's enough for me oh th um, there's also the factor that that uh, with technology where it is right now brains can be scanned and so yes as as uh, as as far as i could uh read is that um some people have alters that are different in age and up to the point where there are kids living in their brains. Yeah. And you can easily track uh, a child's behavior and the child's brain mm -hmm. behavior uh, as opposed to a grown-up's grown one. And so it was also researched. So people who have uh, child alters uh, have been scanned their brains have been scanned while they were um, having those alters in, in uh, control. And uh, they did have different uh, mm -hmm. brain waves or like different behavior of the, of the brain. It's at different that time. things lighting so, up for different cues. Yeah. And yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I think, um, there was, was a point I was going to make that I'd completely forgotten. Um, what was I going to say? There's always there's always some one part in in it, within the episode that my brain just flumps. <laughs> when I was when I was looking up other other stuff around DID, um, there was a video of this um, case of a criminal um, who, you know, they they, they weren't sure whether whether it was was genuine or not but they um basically leaned on a DID diagnosis in order to avoid serving jail time um like uh i can i can't remember the exact specifics of it um but they they they, they were inconsistent like like we were talking about how you know the the changes and the alters were very consistent for a certain personality or behavior or brain pattern or, or hormone or look or things like that and and he wasn't very con like consistent with that and um there were there were a lot of things that are across sort of cuz he was institutionalized instead of sent to prison um and there were a lot of cases along that sort of journey where there was just you know he he said that one of his alters could speak like spanish or something and then and, and he, he couldn't um and they couldn't write that and i think th things like that specifically in the media can can be um in, in like the real life media i think it can be quite um Damaging. stigmatizing in nature like uh because obviously like people people can fake anything like if they if they want to and they know the um ins and outs of it and they've practiced it <laughs> you know if someone could someone could fake autism if they, if they really wanted to i i can imagine um not saying that that anyone else does um <laughs> would want to um but it's it's something that people can do 
and it's it's that that existence of people having that sort of um confirmation bias about things because they're kind of seeing people or they they see someone in the news who has like a like a child altar and they're like what that, that doesn't make any sense to me this is this must be fiction this is like unbelievable what 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 is this like it must be wrong and and so they just ignore all of the the information that just confirms that it is a thing um and wait for something just to happen like someone having a child alter or someone going to jail uh or someone faking did in order to avoid jail time um like pe- people very much have like the for, for some things that they don't understand it's almost like they they're clinging on to um something in order to to not agree that it is a possibility because it just it's so far out of their um field of view of like how reality can be for them yep um i i, I guess like you know cuz obviously it, it is stigmatized in in the media and as you said within the scientific community which is a really really big issue um but what about sort of mainstream film what about the um films like split um what do you think about that kind of representation do you feel like it's it's accurate do you feel like it's good <sighs> or bad good day viewers and listeners Apologies for my very rude interruption to our regularly scheduled broadcast. I just want to remind you that if you have enjoyed the podcast thus far, please make sure to rate, subscribe, like, comment and share. All of these actions are pretty much the lifeblood of a small, independent creator like myself. And it will help me get most of my work, more of my work, to people who really need it. If you want to stay up to date with my life, get behind the scenes content, check out my daily blogs. Head over to the Instagram at Thomas Henley UK. You'll find a link to that down in the description, alongside my range of neurodiversity clothing, just like this strong, powerful autistic hoodie that I love so much. And my website, of course, where you can find a contact email to book me for one to one autism coaching, interviews, workplace training, and speaking. So, thank you very much for listening to this very annoying self advert, and I hope you enjoy. The rest of the show. Whew. I think, uh, yeah, a, a lot of DID people have issues with split. I can't say that uh, I am on their side because, um, to me, it it depends on how the what, what conclusions people take from there Mm -hmm. uh apparently people do take the very very uh wrong conclusions uh but that's what saying that the light can do in every yeah they can have evil people can do that from any sort of sort of thing uh what i kind of saw in a split is that it actually shows you that there is so many different ways uh, that a DID person might be like, mm-hmm. uh, because I, I I I keep coming back to to this example of of just a household with uh with people in it. How many sorts of like how many combinations of people living in one house could there be? Millions. Uh, there could be evil people in that house. There could be absolute angels in that house like and all of them might might be saints and everything in between yeah and everything in between exactly and so uh if people didn't get that from split then well i'm not sure (laughs) what can help there but uh i did like it for uh explaining again that um dad people might be uh very different from others and and uh the the uh, alters can be so uh, dramatically um, different from each other, and that um, is is just a pretty unique condition in that way. So mm-hmm. they did they did really point that out there. But uh, yet again, if people think that 
that's exactly how every DID system should be like, then, well, cool, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go and find Cause, some superpowers in me. Because <laughs> uh, I, 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 I found it very hard to, to grasp that you only had have two alters. Because in my in my mind, when I think of DID, I think of people like within the film of like Split. They have like 10, 12, like twenty different sort of people living in it, and there's just constant switches back and forth throughout the day. And that's that's how I sort of pictured it in my mind when I was sort of trying to understand it. Um, just two people in this house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't invite anyone over. No, actually, uh, I know that uh, some DID people develop more uh, um, personalities with time. I'm not sure if that, that's because of like uh, um, continued exposure to traumatic experiences or not, or is just brain just continuing to develop uh, in that uh, path. With, with us is just stop there and mm -hmm. uh, i guess maybe maybe the problem was solved like as in uh the yeah the case was solved we the, the this this container was created everything fit there nothing else was needed and so it, it just stopped there i i hope that that will still be the case forever because that's actually manageable <laughs> yeah there's um I mean, there's just one last thing that I want to touch on before we sort of try and wrap things up. Um, I uh, I follow a lot of like varied, like uh, uh, different YouTubers. Like I like to, personally, I like to watch people from all sort of angles, like uh, of life, whether that be politics, whether that be sort of opinions, whether that be, you know, disciplines and personalities. I I tend to follow like a lot of different people, and the, there was this one particular um, YouTube channel who, which which was talking about um, sort of well it it, it we weren't really sh sh obviously they weren't very sure because they're not they're not an expert in in the idea they have no personal experience um, but they were talking about how um, people were faking it on social media for attention. Um, I, uh, you know, obviously just was pretty taken back by some of the, the things that they were saying, but I, do you think that, that some people could do that? And do you think that if, even if that's the case that, well, I'm, I'm kind of doing a loaded question, but even if that's the case, that some people do fake it and, so, and other people don't, that it's worthwhile for you to comment on them and say that they are faking something. <laughs> Very loaded question, because obviously you can tell what my my opinion is. But um, yeah, what, what, what do you think about that? Like, uh, do, you do you find that that's something that, that anyone's mentioned to you before? That's funny because it was just the other day when I was uh, discussing someone with someone, mm -hmm. and I was expressing that the that person is someone I really don't trust, and I would really, um, I would be very disappointed if I found out that they're actually faking it because it's a it would be a huge blow, but. Um, it's just ugly and I'd rather people didn't do it because it's just ugly. It's just like, well, you know, again, um, there are people like faking cancer. There are people faking, uh, that they're cripples. Like mm. <laughs> there are so many ugly things in the world. Uh, unfortunately, that won't make people um, st stop believing that sure. cancer exists. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that won't make people doubt that uh, cripples exist. But with the ID uh, being as um, 
uh, under researched as it is uh, and under discovered as it is, uh, it obviously will um, be damaging to mm. those who are trying to get diagnosed and trying to um, find their place in the society uh, with how they are. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, if I discovered that someone big were faking it, I it would be a very very big ethical dilemma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just I really don't want to think about it because it's no, just no, ugly. Of course, it's, yeah. it's just ugly and it's. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm 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 mentioning this because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are very quick to give their opinion on something, and um, they see something that doesn't necessarily align with their view of what's possible and what can happen, and they think it's their responsibility to point it out. Um, and I think I think in in any case, if someone is, you know. You know, I, I was watching another person, sort of a, a doctor in psychology, and that he was talking about, you know, the facts that actually coming out and displaying yourself to the world as as your alters and sort of letting people know is like one of the first steps in, um, you know, processing what's what's happening to you and sort of managing your life and sort of finding ways to, um, to grow and to to you know, live life. Um, and, and, and the fact that, that people do that kind of thing, I think is, it's, I think it's, it's, it's not something that, that people should, should do. They shouldn't be pointing out, um, people, even, even if they, they are very strongly inclined and they feel like, um, this is something that they should talk about and that it's something that they feel is wrong and they feel like they're faking it for attention. You know, you've, you've got to think of the type of people who would fake that kind of thing. They're probably not very mentally okay. Like, they're probably not doing very well. Um, on one hand, you could be really sort of denying the reality of someone with a very complex and stigmatized condition and on the other hand, um, you are bashing someone who is in a very vulnerable um, and sort of delusional state. Um, and that's not really something that I think people on the internet should should have um, a say in, really. Uh, I think, you know, in, in as many cases as possible, you should always take people's Word for it, and I think, you know, just just as we're, I was talking about the sort of the diagnosis success for for major depressive disorder and diagnosis for for DID, people fake depression, um, especially during in in work situations, um, family situations, um, in legal situations, either with organisations. If they say that they're depressed, they are automatically a, a vulnerable group. Um, so it's kind of, you know, you could, you could take that any, anywhere and you could, you could go about and say, Hey, you don't exist because you're depressed. Um, so I, I feel like it's, it's, it's hard for me because it is like, it's, it's a very stigmatized area of things and it's not something that's as research as things like major depressive disorder, but I don't feel like just because it's something that doesn't seem um, congruent with your worldview that you should immediately pointing out as something as as being fake or unreal or not valid, like it re it really annoys me. It really angers me when when people just feel that need to be like, hey, no, not real. <laughs> it's like, great. Do you want do you want to write a thesis about it and and post it? Do you want to um, give them a diagnosis by by talking through like their their life and their experiences and stuff it's 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 ridiculous um yeah i i'm i'm thankful that i don't get a lot of people saying that that my being me being autistic's fake um <laughs> 
now, now and again, people wait. Wait, you don't but... look autistic. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> well, yes, yes, you know, there's, there's, there's no look to it. No. <laughs> uh, it could be anyone, I, you know. I could be, could be faking everything. I mean, that's just as valid as as any point about the ID. I think in my books. But anyway, um, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it is like, it's something that I've been thinking about, and and sort of thinking about how in general people react to things like that and you know if there's a lot of people who think that autism doesn't exist and i think if you're listening to to us talk uh you're hearing about no tricks experiences and you're thinking hey that sounds a bit too far-fetched uh think of all the people in your life who don't think that autism is a thing and think how that made you feel and you know i think i think that's that's a good comparison to make that's that's you could very well be doing um a lot of personal uh, emotional damage to a lot of people by um being that sort of close minded about stuff um but yeah um was there any, was there anything else that you wanted to to say on that or um yeah, I think if people listened to this point in the podcast, I think well, they, they probably will be have because very. In order to listen to it, they need to they need to be at this point in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. They probably have uh, little doubt remaining uh, yes. about how I real hope. that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think we have done a good job explaining. (laughs) You've done a great job. 